think it's, it's there. All right, I uh, got it. I'm good to go. Okay. Um, have you seen something out in either any of the books? Any um, question out that? Uh, I kind of want to. Um, I went back to reading the London book. I just want that so that I know exactly what I'd be doing when I play against E4. But in um, ah. what I didn't really look at it like immediately. But I am okay. on the page like forty three, and I think the the London book is like two hundred thirty pages, at least the first one. So like I'm kind of in there, but it's still like in that first part with the Carol Con structure. So I've just been learning a lot of those lines. Um, and then I think after I finish that book, I will probably start on on Nidor stuff after that. Okay, okay, okay. So which orders are you? Reading right now. I mean, D4, what, D5? Mm -hmm. uh, so when, basically, when Jack plays C5 takes. Um, they didn't that? go over, they didn't do that one yet. It was the, or maybe it is, let me see. No, I mean, um, because you said Karokan structure, usually the Karokan is like this, right? So you could play Bishop before and yeah, it's more or less like a London, but there are some specific things, right? Because when they go C5 immediately, the knight's not on F6 already. So uh, I think sometimes they can play with the knight on G7, for example, or they can go bishop F5, like in this position, for example. They delay knight F6 to mm -hmm. play knight C6, bishop F5, E6, bishop E6, D6. This is very interesting, I guess. Uh, yeah, these are the ones that I've been looking at. Uh, so, and then, well, the, the, the main things are to understand why you delay Nrf3, right? I think we talked about this, but it's always good to to remember that here, if you are playing bishop f4 in move 2, and, and something that um, you have to know, right, that here when they go c5, c3, knight, c6, you have to play knight d2 first always, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not knight f3, not bishop d3, right? Uh, because bishop d3, what's the problem? Every time they play queen b6, if you play queen b3, c4 will force you to take the queen, right? Mm. Uh, we don't want to play something like this. Because we move the bishop, they play b5, b4, takes, b5, b4 again. And that's positionally very, very bad, right? And if we play knight f3, Queen here, queen C, b3, c4, always this is the pattern that will happen. Uh, taking is, I would tell you, always bad, or almost always bad. And if we play queen c2, do you remember what's the, the tactical move that black has? Uh, bishop f5. Bishop f5, exactly. So you can take because queen b2 traps the rook. With all this is why you have to play knight d2 first, but it's it's like the only move you can play. And I remember some games where maybe you do some of these two, mm -hmm. uh, but knight d2 here it's the the idea. Then you always play this setup basically. Uh, there are some other ideas here that if they go e6, you can go bishop d3. Now if they go queen b6, what would you play? Um, maybe b3 b3 is one but i suppose uh, in general when we did 92 bishop d3 and they go queen b6 we can just go rook b1 here okay. without weakening anything i mean i i believe in general you want to play rook b1 uh, because b3 weakens, c3 weakens this square, right? They can take and go bishop a3, they can try to attack c3 later. I don't like playing b3 in general. Sometimes we have to play b3, but if you have the chance, here rook b1 is clearly the move, right? Mm -hmm. You don't weaken anything, you will continue with your development. If queen a5, I don't know, you can go a3 to defend the pawn, and always taking with the a pawn, right? Actually, here you could take with the C pawn as well, but if you play the London, you know in general you want to take like this. Uh, e, E3 takes D4. Uh, 
also they can take in me a little right if they do this and this and you won't have the option to take with the zip on uh, but in general the london setup is trying to take with the the epon uh, yeah. the same happens if they go bishop f5 i mean all these patterns that i think i told you when when the bishop goes to f5 too quickly you have to play c4 queen b3 right if they play c6 queen b6 you will play c5 and you will be the one taking with the a pawn right do mm -hmm. you do you see something like this in the book or or not yet like, yeah i think i i don't think i've like seen like the book but we've gone over it in previous lessons i think i even got in some games too since uh -huh. then yeah 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 this is very typical and this is one of the basic ideas you have to know in the london for white and for black, right? Because it depends who plays queen b3 first, who plays with c4 or c5, who will be pushing the pawn, the pawn first. And, well, you should be happy to play a takes b3, but never to take the queen allowing a takes b6, mm -hmm. right? Also, one detail. This is like this when the pawns are still here, right? When the center is still like this, all this applies. But imagine now we play uh takes i don't know for example narizen takes takes here queen b6 to say something right now if we take pawn take this is really weak right the the problem of these pawns is where they play c4 you still have the pawn on c3 and they will play b5 before takes b5 before again uh, but don't be afraid to to trade the queen when this is already trade right like also if they take with the e pawn, this is very good for black, right? This center is very good. This one with the pawn on e6 is very bad. Uh, same happens for white, right? In general, like if they play c5 first, and I don't know at some point, yeah, let's suppose they go queen b6 immediately. You do this, and now they play uh, pawn takes. What would you play as white? You have a few um, alternatives. He takes, well, wait. I'm trying to see, just lose a pawn if you take with the pawn. Why not? Because they can't. Yeah, well, he takes d4. Yeah, he takes d4 is good. But in this case, trading the queen first is also very, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Like, takes he Because the bishop covers b5. He's not playing b5 before. Uh, and well, the point is seeing that this is one thing, right? The center, like this. And another thing is when they take, right? Here, we don't mind taking. Actually, this pawn is very weak. Bishop C7 could be winning the pawn the next move. Mm. Uh, so this only applies when, when the center is close, right? And the bishop is not covered in B5, and this will come like almost in me even if we do e4 like could be a good move they just go e6 go knight f6 bishop castle but at some point b5 before we happen and also that we don't have time to prevent this right because if we go knight e2 they go b5 and if we play a3 they still play before right yeah uh maybe if they go knight f6 we push and we move the rook or we castle, I don't know. Let's suppose just rook c1. Uh, or rook d1, maybe it's more useful in case at some point this will be open. Um, this is reasonable for white. I mean, even castle castle queen side could be a, a move to play when there's no bishop here, right? If the bishop is on f5, castle king, queen side is always a big mistake because of a tactic. Imagine the bishop is, is, is on a fight here. What would be a move for black? Um, rook takes a3. Rook takes a3, yes, yeah. because bishop takes his mate. So uh, I had a game, which, I mean, it's from a different opening, but I will show you. Um, I will I will copy uh -huh. something. I don't know if you want to download this or not. Yeah, I saved it. Not too relevant, but still. Mm -hmm. um, so BGN and copy here. 
So I was black this game against uh, Granda, this number one of Peru and probably just all South America. And mm -hmm. I played this setup as black, which, well, it's not a London exactly, but I'm putting the pieces like if I would be playing a London as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, and he has Fianchetto, which is a bit different, but still some ideas will be the same. He goes Queen B3. And I go queen b6, right? Typical reaction. Now, if he plays c5, what do you think black should play? Um... It's very important to consider that the bishop is on g2 now, right? Not on the f1 or d3 or e2 square. I don't know, it still seems like if you go queen c7, they go bishop f4, and if you take the queen, then they still might be able to keep, like, push the pawns to b5, but maybe... Um... Yeah, I mean, one, I think if you have to choose between queen c7 or queen b3, queen c7 is better. I mean, you could do this and this, and it's playable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with this, and actually in the game, I end up playing something like this. But if he plays c5 here with the bishop on g2, I have this alternative of playing queen a6. That is also mm -hmm. defending b7, right? Usually in, in the previous London, we saw the bishop is here, and the bishop is going f c7. So now next move is b6. Doesn't matter too much what you play, right? Knight c3, b6. Because I want you to take, then I take, and then I develop, and all my center is it's very nice, right? Mm -hmm. So, in the London, in general, we can't play queen a6. Uh, but, well, he went knight c3 first, knight c7, rook e1. Uh, this move is very subtle, I, I believe. Uh, what do you think rook e1 could be trying to to play? Because there, there is something more or less uh, concrete and, and, and clear, but there is a, a very tricky idea behind Rookie One. It could be to maybe get the bishop to f1 so that queen a6 is the move. That's if I had to think of something that's not expected. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the, the all you think that you could say is, well, maybe you're trying to prepare e4. Move the knight, play e4, that's... But the idea is to play c5. And in case of queen a6, we can go bishop f1. He's kind of preparing this. Um, so I went bishop e7, and he went c5. Now queen a6 would be losing because of bishop f1. He's trying to play e4, and well, I just lose. But here is where I saw when I was preparing a very, very nice idea. That in this position, since the bishop is not on f1, and there is no bishop on f4, now I can take, pawn takes, and here I'm in time to stop b4, b5, right? But not only that, uh, I saw a lot of correspondence games that black plays castle queen side here. Castle Queenside is, is great. I mean, if we can play it, because, I mean, usually in the London, the bishop will be here, the bishop will be here, rook a6 will be winning. But here it's just very, very nice. Because you defend b7, that is the 
you uh, you remember this plan with the knight coming to to a5? Yeah. So here it's not useful anymore because the king is already in c8. Black can try to play 45 or g5, g4, and push the pawns. Uh, knight e4 is always a move. So I didn't know this idea when I played this game. I went queen c7, which is always something reasonable, and here queen c8. But for the for understanding the the pawn structure, it's very nice to consider that sometimes this could be reasonable. In the London, I believe it's it's very strange that queen b3 is a good idea when the pawn is on c5. Again, if he plays c takes d5, and now I trade queen, it's fantastic for me. I, I, this is important to to point out. Right? This position is one thing. And c5 takes this position is another completely different thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Here it still works because a6 castle queenside, because no bishops for the tactics, right? Uh, when I went queen c7, bishop f4, queen c8, I have a good position still. But according to the engine, if he goes 92 e4 immediately, I'm still in some trouble. I don't. I don't equalize completely. He went rook ac1, which it's a, it's a strange move. It has a tactical idea, right? It's, it's trying to stop my uh, typical move in this pawn structure. I mean, what do you think I would like to play as black in this position? Um, if it's black to move, and also you know he went rook ac1, so what is he trying to avoid? I guess b6. b6, yeah. exactly. I want to undermine the center, force him to take, then my center is going to be very good, right? I don't like him to have the pawn on c5. If rook ac1, b6, what's the problem? Not sure. I think they take on b6 and then the c6 pawn is weak. But okay. Can you do something more more concrete? Actually, I don't see anything. Um... Well, the, the idea is that after pawn takes, uh, you have knight b5 because the 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 pin here, right? You can go knight b5, knight c7. So what's okay. the point? If you castle, for example, knight c7, attacks the rook, you move the rook, and then the weak pawn, you can take it. Okay. Uh, also, you could just play something like bishop d6 here, which is probably good enough because, I mean, if you take, take, you move the queen, I take the bishop, this pawn is weak. This could be also reasonable, but knight 7 is just winning a pawn and probably the game. So, well, the rest of the game doesn't matter too much. I just wanted to show you this part because now it's super concrete. I don't know if what he did was right or not, but, but this part, I mean, seeing that the, the queen b6, queen b3 happens in, in a lot of situations. Uh, c5 is the typical move. Uh, let me see if I can find some more example on this with my games. Actually, I had a game against Andre King. No, but this is completely different. Have many games where where the queens are on b3 and b6, but no one is taking. Uh, okay, this game that Shankland won against me, 
uh, okay, I will I will copy something if you want to download this. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, so this game I lost in the Olympiad against Shankland. And the same type of thing, right? Different structure. I mean, the bishop is, is not on f4 and, and so on, but the queens are on b6 and, and b3. This is the, the point. And in this game, he decides to take. But it was very, very smart and good preparation by him to play knight a6. Uh, this, this wasn't very popular at that moment. I remember if he takes, takes knight a6, I had a c5 prepared attacking. So if he goes knight before, I can go rook a4. And after something like a5, I have um, ideas of, well, I can trade the bishop, I can go g4 and take the bishop, that's more or less okay. But at some point I go bishop d2, king e2, rook here, this this will suffer, right? It's hard to defend a5 from him. Probably bishop e2 is, is the best move. King takes, bishop d2, rook d1, and he will suffer. And if he tries to play uh, this, this, and knight c7, I can probably go b4 and b5 anyway, right? Because of the... Actually, here, can I play b5? No, he takes with the a pawn, I can't. The knight on c7 is actually quite good for this pawn structure. It's not very common, but he went knight a6 first anyway. Now I went c5 and he took and went knight c7, right? Same, similar thing. Now, when I go b4, a6, he's covering this. I don't have the bishop on this diagonal, and I don't have the plan of knight 2 knight 3 knight 5 So many things in in his favor. This is probably equal, but he got a position like this, where he is holding, he castle queenside, right? Every time you can castle queenside in this pawn structure, because it's like you already closed the queenside, right? Like, b5 is never an option. You just take. The knight here, the knight covers a8, the knight covers a6. The knight here is fantastic. And now he just needs to play 45, right? The, the typical, if I'm pushing on, a, on on the flank, he wants to counterattack in the center with this move. And I don't know till what moment this was preparation by him, because he went g5, he went g6, and f5. I mean, I remember he plays this very, very quickly. And well, maybe it's still it's more or less equal if I play g5 here. I didn't do that. And then, uh, well, I got to travel very quickly. I mean, I think knight f6 here, g4, knight e4 was just uh, fantastic for him because uh, imagine that he plays knight e4. I probably, I'm probably forced to take and he can take with this pawn, right? Allowing the d5, the, the knight come to, to come to, to d5. Uh, he went e5, and then here and here, and he got more or less all he wanted. I mean, this endgame is just very, very sad for me. He's doubling rooks, attacking the pawns, improving the bishop, and eventually playing e4. That's more or less what happened. I mean, I lost this game without fighting too much. If you see, he improved all the pieces, he plays a 4 in the end, and I'm just losing uh, the h4 pawn and the game. So, what happened between move 21 and 40 more or less it's it's very hard to avoid my last chance was playing g5 but still he can double rooks play e5 knight e6 i don't think my my position is too solid like him right i mean if you see his pawn structure super super solid there's nothing i can do the only thing could be knight e2 right to play knight e4 but he went e5 very quickly and and i i got in trouble the knight will be defending here attacking g4 so this is another example of uh, a queen trade that ends up well for the the player that takes. In general, and this game with uh, my game against Granda has this in common. I'm stopping b5, right? This is super, super important. If you take the queen or uh, as white, right? This could be with, with the pawn on c3, the pawn on c5, and, and black pushing c5, you have to be completely sure that b5 is not happening, all right? If you do this and I go b5, you are in trouble, positionally speaking. Because then I take, then I go b5 before b5 again. Imagine uh, I do this, 
I don't know, takes, takes, let's suppose G4. And after this, I takes, and I probably go, uh, and maybe here you have rook P8 and you can't play B5 so quickly, but let's suppose a, a waiting move right here, and I go B5, this is losing for luck, uh, directly losing, because this position, this pawn against this pawn is just, uh, just too good. I mean, there's no way that a7 is not going to be falling, and c5 is so well protected. So here, what you do, just bring pieces, double rooks, put pressure on a7, and eventually you take it. Uh, so well, this idea of putting the knight on c7, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Mm. And then, yeah, no, that's the only, the only two games that are relevant, I, I think. I have like, a lot of games where, where this happens a lot and no one takes, right? Um, and there's probably some game where someone takes in a bad, bad situation. Like, let me see. I put this. OK, here no one takes. Here no one takes. OK, and if I do this. OK, I think I show you this game, but I, I'm, I'm, I will copy something else. OK. Do uh, you a lot? Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine. OK, so this game, I was black. It's a, it's a rapid game. It's not very important, but I just want to show you that I went queen b6. He probably needs to play something different uh, after this move. Uh, Actually, I think bishop f5 is a reasonable move. And after queen b6, there's a few alternatives. There is knight h4. There is queen c1. Uh, yeah, I think these two. But playing queen b3 is just bad, because I managed to play c4. Now you don't have queen here, right, because the bishop is on f8. You don't have queen c2, because the bishop is on f5. So you have to take. And now uh, I'm trying to play b5 before. What happens? In this position, he has time to play a3, rook c1. But then I have the, the typical plan. I think this game, it's very, very typical. It doesn't matter that he has an extra tempo, right? Because now I'm black. We saw this position uh, for for white. But I took, bring the knight to d7, b6. He needs to play this and this to defend the pawn. It's curious that there's no other way to defend the pawn. And when he plays like this, I can play before. And this is just losing in 15 moves. And, and white didn't do anything terrible. But positionally speaking, I castle, I play rooks here, c3, and well, the game ends in, in a few moves. But the, the, the game is probably lost. Positionally speaking, the moment he plays queen b3, c4 takes. I mean, maybe he has like a better way to to fight and hold here. I mean, I don't think this is like losing directly, but it's very, very dangerous, right? He did typical moves, and I just want to bring my knight to a4. H h6, I think, is important. I don't know what happens if he goes knight h4, actually. Maybe he should do this. Um, because this bishop is very annoying for white, covering these two squares, right? If you manage to take this one, I don't know. Computer doesn't care too much. It says black is much better anyway. But if you take the bishop and when the knight comes to d4, you can play rook c2, it's a different story. I believe this could be. Maybe this move is annoying. Because now if we take, they take with the d pawn and it's very hard to save the piece. Actually, I don't know if we can save the piece. This is a nice pattern as, uh, as well to, to know. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe knight h4, I should play bishop b4. I guess you have f3. And now I wonder if bishop d3 is a possibility, right? Because uh, if we go back, you just take with the knight and should be good for, for you. But if I go bishop d3, even if you take takes my pawn is weak, I'm threatening this. And how do you save the pieces? I mean, try to try to think uh, a bit. You will see it's, it's quite annoying. Maybe you have one way. Um, 
I see I see a way to save the pieces, at least. But still, is 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 quite bad. Okay. I'm looking at some like um G three. Uh H six. All right now. So then like G four, because I was thinking G three and G four seem kinda similar, but maybe yeah, G four then. I think G four is better because you also give this square for the bishop, right? If you do G3 here, I was expecting something like knight G2. And then when I start playing G5, your bishop starts having a lot of troubles. I mean, like if you go here, do this and, and rook A6. Maybe you can always end up like putting the bishop in a square like this to not lose the piece, like the full piece. But I think if you play G4, I mean, you can always play here. And I mean, this could be bad positionally speaking. I can go H5 and I think. It's it's actually terrible for white because you have to take uh, the knight take. I go bishop d6. This pawn is actually super annoying because I can go knight f5, knight c4, and then this pawn might be even protected. Um, but well, I suppose he should try to play a move like this because then when I go a6, this looks like the 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 plan we saw for white. I mean, takes knight comes, and he just lost. Uh, in 15 moves, right? And, and it's a London white didn't do anything terrible, but uh, when we trade queens here, we have to be very, very careful. I show you some examples where it was possible to, to take. Actually, it was always for black. I'm playing knight a6 and knight c7. But in my game, it was because he had Fianchetto, right? Against Granda. In Shankland games, because he can put the knight on c7 quickly. If the knight is on b7, uh, and I beat 7 I mean, uh, it's probably most of the time it's going to be bad. I mean, it has to be very specific. Uh, and the other game, very similar to this. Um, okay, I will copy something else in case you want to, to download that. Yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. It's this game where same happens, right? Queen b6, he did knight f3. I mean, why should play knight e2? This is what we said. But even if you play knight f3, queen b6, here I believe white has some decent ways of of playing. Um, one alternative is playing queen c2 immediately. Uh, so what's a typical problem with queen c2? Bishop f5. Okay, and is it possible to play bishop f5 in this particular position? There is a, a difference with the, the, the position we always see. You can go bishop d3. Well, no. Not really, right? Because I take and take. Mm -hmm. Um, you can maybe take the C pawn. Or why? we can take this. Yeah, I mean that's that's the point. I mean, if we go Queen C two. Bishop f5, we can take this pawn. Right? The, the position we always see is queen b3, c4, queen c2. Now bishop f5, perfect. Works very well. If the pawn is still on c5, this means if, if we play queen c2 immediately, this is tricky because many players will say, okay, I just go bishop f5, like always. 
And actually, here we go, D takes C5, and this is very good for white. Now, Queen C5, blunder a piece. Bishop C2 is the only move. And then C takes. And when you takes, I don't know, I go in Ad3, in Ad2, doesn't matter. But again, we have the position where these two pawns are weak and not strong, right? There's no D4 pawn against C4 with a typical uh, pawn push. Mm -hmm. So here, the question I always have is, uh, is why not knight a3, right? Because I had a game against Shankland. It was a opposite color. It was a slab and so on. But usually this move to play knight c2 a3 should be a reasonable way of playing. But it seems that here is not too good. I mean, maybe black should just play bishop f5 to avoid this. Uh, because if I try to play, what, well, let's suppose rook a5, knight a7, moves to support b5, I believe knight c2 a3 should be good for white. I mean, this setup, imagine rook a5, knight c2. Ah, but knight c2, maybe bishop f5. Yeah, this is the problem. I don't have a good way to, to defend yet. I, I, I miss one tempo. Okay. Maybe you still have bishop c7 here, right? Attacking the pawn, and if knight is 7 then you can go knight c2, a3. If knight is 7 I mean. Um, if knight a7, for example, maybe you can play knight c2, and after bishop here, knight b4, and after this, e a3. If you manage to, to take the queen, but stopping the b5, b4 thingy, then it's, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's something you can do. Uh, but I believe that white in this position should play queen c2. Uh, even, I mean, according to the engine, even b3 is better than queen b3, which b3 is a move I hate. I mean, I would never play b3 here. Even if I see it's a top computer move, I mean, I, I, I believe this move is not with the spirit of the, of the position of the London. I mean, you want to have like a, a solid pawn structure, and I prefer playing I mean, queen c2, even, even playing this, I mean, if, if you ask me, I prefer doing this than playing b3. Uh, so this game, again, nothing too special. I can play before. I think after this, he's positional, positionally in, in big trial, right? Because I will play b5 before again, eventually. I don't have to hurry even. Okay, when this happens, I'm pushing. Attacking this pawn, he will lose b2 eventually. So he tries to do something concrete. He gives me this pawn, and well, the position I didn't copy full, but just to uh, talk again about this queen b3, queen b6, right? I mean, I saw, I, I remember we talked about some of these positions before. Uh, the most interesting factor should be what happens when take takes an a3, right? This is, I remember there are some positions where e5 is good. I believe here it shouldn't be the case. Well, actually, it's very tricky. Oh, if I here is super tricky because if you take and I take, it's very good for black. Uh, like takes, takes, for example. Here, 94, this has to be a disaster. But you can go 95. This becomes super wild, actually, because I'm threatening the, the fork. If you take this, I take this and Probably the knight will be escaping. I'm not like super sure, but in a position like this, if you go knight e7, it's like you will never attack the, the this. I can go knight g5. I can do many things. I can just take and you are putting the pieces in a way that yes, my knight trap. But if you don't attack the knight, it's probably the same. And if you try to take it with the rook, it's gonna be super hard to clean all these pieces without allowing knight before knight b6. Uh, so it seems the line here is rook a5, attacking the two things. Now d takes is playable, takes, takes, takes. It's more or less even according to the engine actually. And the rest computer line is, is fantastic actually. It's nice e7, king d7, and now it's just d takes. If you take, I take the knight. So best move is knight h5, and now it seems the knight is trapped. Because, well, I will take the bishop, I will take the knight. But still, the computer says knight takes d5. 
rook d5, bishop c4, rook c5 takes, for example, takes and takes. And this position is hard to evaluate. <laughs> the computer is equal. I would say I prefer black, to be honest. Uh, so maybe e5 is a, a very interesting idea in this particular situation, right? I, I didn't have this this chance against uh, Shanklan because my bishop, I mean, was in here to start. My bishop was like in this diagonal. Uh, but if white gets nice to a3, it's uh, and rook c1, right? In time, imagine. Uh, let's let's lose some tempo on purpose. If I get this position, white is completely safe. You don't have to worry about the the, the typical plans here, right? And also, in h four is a move we want to do before a six happen. Okay, this is more uh, more or less all about uh, the queen b six, queen b three setup. It's not the only thing that happens in the London, of course. Uh, and let me check uh, in the book. You're reading the Cedelac one, right? Yeah. So the chapters you are reading uh, are which order? Like, it's the the one with the it's just the Carol Constructure. It's a pretty long chapter, it seems. It's like the uh, first main chapter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Carol Gun chapter is well. Let's suppose. We get this position as 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 main thing. So here they can go bishop f5, and and we usually go queen b3, right? This is like the typical reaction. Queen b6 here, for the reasons we talked before, is very weak because we just take it, right? This is also when... after bishop f4. I mean bishop f5. I think sometimes they go knight f3 and then queen b3. And I was seeing that more often where I saw it first, so I I think I just play that and then queen b3 after. Yes, yes, yes. This is very typical. And when we go queen b3, black should probably go always queen c8. Uh, because queen c7 is not possible. Queen b6 is very weak once we trade the pawns. And queen d7, I don't like it because when we bring the knight or the bishop on b5, the queen on d7 is a, a big target, let's, let's say. Um, there is a specific moment where queen d7 is very nice, and it's when black don't play knight f6 and the reason is is quite logical actually because if we do all the same uh, and uh, in this position they go knight g7 they go f6 they go any move like that uh, actually let's suppose we go queen b3 immediately and they go queen d7 after bishop b5 black can play f6 Right, uh, and this f6 move is very reasonable to to put the queen on d7, but otherwise, like if we play knight d2, knight f7, queen b3, this move is not so good because knight d5 is just attacking the queen. If you take, you can hang the queen with this pin. We attack the the, the the knight, so queen c8 is now the only move, and you don't want to play. To white plays knight d5 for free, right? You should go this immediately. Uh, and and then the plan when the bishop is like not with a6, we want to play in h4 and take the bishop and then develop. Uh, yeah. So that's what's happening in many lines. You have to see the order for for your opponent. Then in this order, after queen b3, uh, queen d7 is okay. Queen c8 is playable. I mean, always the same. But there was an order I played as black. against Tristan. Okay, I'm, I'm going to copy another game to to show you that order. I don't remember exactly. Okay. Um, it's a very short game. We made a a quick draw in that game. So how was it? Okay, I took, I went bishop f5, e6, and after queen b3, okay, this is super specific. Bishop d6 works very well. Um, this is, how can I say, it's one of the most precise ways of playing for black. Because another idea, of course, is playing c3, knight, d2, right? But when you play the knight on f3 too quickly, here you have to play knight, d2, because c3, queen, b6 is already bad. Uh, I mean, you can still go queen, c2, as we just said, 
but it's not not so good because black can still go g6 bishop f5 um, so he went knight bd2 this is what uh, london players are playing right now like this is the the modern way of, of playing it because after queen b6 we go d takes e 5 which is very different from the london system actually uh, after this we go rook b1 bishop b5 c4 it's it's something like this i mean you suck a few pawns and if they take you go c4 or castle and c4 this is like only a pawn for a huge development lead it makes sense uh but well i had something in mind didn't want to allow all these and I took one bishop f5 e6 and now if queen b3 i just go bishop d6 what's the main idea if he takes the pawn i go bishop takes f4 and queen c6 king f8 this is uh very unbalanced right we have a pawn for two bishops the king is on f on f8 usually g6 king g7 will happen g3 we just go back with the bishop rook b8 will be attacking b2 i believe black is completely fine in this position uh, my opponent was surprised by bishop d6 and he decided to just play bishop takes bishop b2 castle which okay it's not like terrible for white but of course black is is doing super fine here right there's no problems and it was a draw quickly i offered a draw here i don't know the tournament situation was was good for me to make a draw as black uh but i don't know i, I would be happy to keep playing this position against most of the the opponents um so this is one order like takes takes bishop f5 now there is bishop b5 which is interesting i did this as white as well um but this is about this order right because then you will have like a, a huge different chapter in this position right when they play like this and they don't take they play bishop d6 this is like the other big setup for for black also take takes knight h5 is a big big setup for black i mean you will have like uh, three big divisions in the book one should be covering this one one should be covering bishop d6 then all the caro can setups uh then the bishop f5 setups i believe could be also uh and then uh, i'm thinking ah okay that book is only for uh the london against e5 right mm -hmm. yeah there's already... another one that i have yeah. for the other stuff yes yes but even the the, the volume two after knight f6 he doesn't recommend to play bishop f4 he says knight f3 uh, and if g6 he goes bishop g5 actually so it's a bit strange because the the name of the book is winning with the modern london system and after knight f6 g6 he recommends the tory attack so it's i don't know he he doesn't like i mean it's completely playable i also play bishop before here um but there's a it depends against who you play right because if they know very well what they are doing sometimes even playing d4 bishop f4 here uh, i believe c5 is very annoying i mean as black i would play c5 because this system where the knight uh, uh, remains on g8 i believe it's just good for black i mean like take takes knight c6 you go c3 bishop f5 now it doesn't really matter which one you play because i go e6 your typical reaction is queen b3 and then i go queen d7 because i can play f6 uh, and this position i analyze it and i think it's just just very good for black the idea is g5 h5 maybe bring the knight to g6 eventually play bishop d6 so another thing to consider is that every time black plays bishop d6 because i believe here should be playable taking the pawn on b7 is not so important maybe in this position you can still do it if we take bishop b5 knight e5 should be annoying uh, but in my game something like this happens right he could take the pawn like like here but then i just go uh rook b6 rook b8 queen a6 castle again not taking because bishop b5 is probably winning a piece but i just go castle here and it's super hard to defend b2 
because what will you do? I mean, playing b4, for example, we can c3 a lot, and maybe it's even worse. Playing queen a3, I just takes. I mean, and, and now your extra pawn is just ridiculous, right? This pawn doesn't even count. I go here, knight a5, and rook b2. Uh, and then if you play what castle queenside, it's probably the worst because knight b4 is, I think it's winning, right? This this will be winning. There's knight g4 as well later. I mean, so hard to defend everything. Actually, this move might be winning. Uh, maybe queen e2, but I believe knight b4 always will be coming like a super strong move, right? Mate here, mate here. So after this castle. He doesn't have a good way to defend, and, and maybe knight b3 is the best one. Uh, and here we go, rook b6. Yeah, I remember this this preparation. So what's the point? If you go queen a3, I always take. If you go queen a4, I can probably go e5, and now your king is super exposed. You you are not super far from castling, but uh, far enough, let's say. And then if you go queen e2, trying to stop this, I probably go a5 and rook fd8 and a4. And still, you only for a pawn, white is just losing. I mean, so this setup is one of the reasons. Like I'm probably playing knight f3 in move two, but this is like against what the book says, right? Because uh, here the idea is to play this to delay knight f3. Nowadays, I mean, if you see London players right now, for example, Firosa is playing the, 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 the London in every tournament online, especially. He he get this setup. Oh, sorry. And in this position, he goes 92, right? Like this is the, 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 the modern, modern way of playing the, the London. Because first of all, people used to play uh, like c3 here, queen b6, queen b3, c4, queen c2, queen c1, but that's, I mean, it's clearly bad to play queen b3, queen c2, queen c1, and black is just developing pieces. Then they move to uh, to this order, where, okay, now bishop f5 is not possible because queen b2 is not dropping the, the, the rook, right? And last attempt is okay. I just play knight f3 in move two. Why? Because I don't want to face assistance with the knight on g8. Right. So c4, c5 here. We can go c4. It's we can go e3 and and takes and c4. There, there's I guess c4 is the best move here. But again, if you play the London, could be annoying as well because maybe you want to play c3 or e3. Uh, but People usually play knight here, then we go for the London when the knight's already here. But in this line, we have to play knight b2 because c3 is like the first London system, right? Uh, this one allows d takes c5, which is very good. And uh, yeah, the last thing here is after knight b2, takes takes bishop f5. This is what I played against uh, Tristan this game. I believe bishop e5 is super, super interesting uh, because we want to mix knight e5, c4, queen a4 moves. It's it's more aggressive like a normal London. Uh, after e6, I go knight e5, and after queen b6, I go uh, c4. This is like the, the preparation I wanted to play. Um, also, if they go rook c8, uh, and oh, this is just losing the exchange. Because of bishop b7. And uh, now queen b6 is the move, and now c4. This is well, very reasonable. There was something else. I think queen b6 immediately. That we play c4 takes a4. I play this position in, in some game. And I remember something very nice actually. After e6, not knight c4, bishop b4, because I think black is just developing very normally, but playing castle here. And after this, I think, was it here, 95? Yeah, 95 here. This is a, a game I had online. Uh, it's all home preparation, right? Because they can take the exchange, which has got queen takes. 
and knight d c four is coming, bishop e three when they take d four, rook d one, and I remember I was quite winning. Something like this, queen d four, bishop e three, and here my opponent went for something very very bad. Don't remember which move, or maybe here. But this should be more or less equal if they play best moves, queen e four, queen d five. But would would attempt to to surprise people. I mean, considering this is one of the most critical lines nowadays, and bishop e5 is not too popular. Um, and again, queen b3, bishop d6 is supposed to be okay for black. So this is like very very theoretical, and probably some of these things are not in the said black book. So the black book is I don't know 2016, 17, May 18. But well, there's like two or three more years of, of games and analysis, and this is more or less what I know about this position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so short story is like, okay, you should probably keep playing Bishop F2 in move two anyway. But uh, take in my, uh, keep in mind that C5 uh, takes 96 is a bit annoying. Like this position, I don't know exactly what why should do. Uh, it's not so easy because, of course, you can go knight f3, bishop d3, takes takes, knight b2, and castle. It's gonna be equal, and that's it. So, what you should know is how to continue those type of games, right? Imagine you go for this. Your opponent goes bishop d6, and I don't know you takes castle here, knight b2, and castle. This is a super typical. London game where white didn't get too much, right? Uh, and black will be playing minority attack, which is rook b8, b5, b4, trying to create a weakness on c3. And you should be, uh, well, you have a few ways of playing. One is bringing the rook, knight e5, f4, and trying to attack on the king side. Another idea is. Uh, to play b4 with good timing, let's say. When when they play here and, and b5, maybe you go b4. And after a5, you go a3. And you try to bring this knight to c5. Also, you could play, for example, uh, rook e1. They play rook here, you play a4. Right? When they play here, you wait. I mean, you can even go b4 here, but let's suppose you wait. When he plays b5, you play takes, takes b4. You bring the knight here, and b5 is weak. So. Those are the typical plans, and maybe black should wait a bit to play b5. It's not too easy. Uh, and yeah, that's the yeah probably the the way of playing this position. But I don't believe bishop b3 is the most critical way of playing, right? I mean, it's a move you can play if you don't want to to heavily prepare an opening. That I mean, we we should consider the London an opening to not style too much openings, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. used to be the way to avoid main theory. Nowadays, it's super popular, and, and people know a lot of theory about it. Uh, so you can still play moves like bishop d3 to just have a good game. I mean, like, you are not better from the opening, but if you know the plans after, could be could be something, right? Uh, especially knowing that black will try to play b5 before, and you have this way of playing, uh, as I told you, right? Like imagine in this position, when they try to play this, you go a4. When they insist, you allow him, and then you take the b4. That endgame, for example, should be really annoying to play for black. Because you are stopping e5, b5 is weak, and this knight on d2 is coming to c5. Uh, but well. The, the truth is that in most of the openings you you study and you uh, of course black is playing good openings, not gambits, not do your things. If they play good lines, um, it should be it should be equal. I mean, for example, I play e4 most of the time, and if my opponent plays the Petrov, the Nidorf, the Berlin. It's very, very hard to get an advantage, and sometimes 
it's better to get a position where it's equal, but you know what to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if, if you have any question. Uh, would be nice if you can uh, continue with that and maybe next time. Well, we also have something about the neither if you want to see, but um, maybe we can take a look at the systems where they don't take error, right? Where they go e6 and bishop d6. You will see in the book. Uh, I consider this to be the main line. I don't know if it's the main line or not, but there will be a lot of material on, on this move. Okay. Uh, it's one of your big systems. Okay, I guess um, I, I, I have a, a lesson soon. Also, uh, mm -hmm. scientists yeah. I have all together. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any any question, anything you want to to tell me, don't wait for for Sunday. Just write me, uh, so I can I can tell you if if I know. If not, we can see uh, next next week. But uh, try to to check out these things we saw today. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Perfect. See you. All right. Bye.